<laughs> All right. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> okay. How's everyone this today? Well, good. All right. Thumbs up. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'd like to say again, you know, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I would like to talk about stylish necklines today. And we're going to look at um, both some runway inspirations and things that I've been working on in my own sewing room. And uh, we'll go through my slideshow and then we'll have time uh, at the end for questions um, and maybe some live demo. Um, if you wanna see some uh, pattern drafting or you know dart manipulation uh, to get all your different styles in. Um, Okay, so let me share screen and we will begin. Again, welcome to the class today. This is um, Stylish Necklines um, with So Dawn. <laughs> uh, that's, I guess, my, my naming myself now, which is a lot of fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, and, you know, first I'd like to talk about, um, you know, what is a stylish neckline? Uh, you know, what defines that for you? Um, is it the shape, um, detail, color, uh, texture? Um, embellishment, seam placement, and I would say yes, yes. all of these, <laughs> it's all things, um, and of course, you know, flattering, um, you know, to you, and something that you like, you know, something that makes you happy that you enjoy wearing, um, okay, so I'm going to begin here, okay, so we're going to begin with some bold asymmetrical necklines, um, the dress on the left uh, this is um, an Oscar de la Renta, uh, and it's just, a I find, a really um, unique asymmetrical neckline um, that it was a collar that they've kind of sliced and then kind of folded open uh, with the turtleneck underneath. Um, it was very simple uh, pieces, maybe color blocked, um, but I think it has a really, um, I don't know, nice statement. Uh, it would look very interesting uh, on your Zoom meeting. Okay, and then on the right is a, a Bagley Mishka gown. And um, again, asymmetrical, um, but festive. Um, I thought this would be really uh, fun for um, like a warm weather holiday party. <laughs> so, uh, and again, just you can add ruffles, um, gathering ruffles. Oh, you know, to your to your gown, and it's basically no bear bodice under there. So, okay. And then, okay, next, I'm just looking at different collars. Um, I know Peter Pan collars have been um, trying to make a comeback for quite a while. Um, I do like um, the uh, blouse on the left, um, the red top with the um, uh, white Peter Pan collar has a nice contrast. Um, I think it really frames the face. Um, you know, perhaps I, the way it's styled is kind of a younger um, look, uh, but I'm not sure <laughs> if anyone remembers wearing Peter Pan collars, um, but I know um, uh, they're fun to sew as well. You can uh, teaching different techniques on how to clip and turn and work with your seam allowances. Um, okay, and the, the top and the center, um, I just, I really like this one, um, that the uh, pleating um, is uh, set into the fabric like accordion pleats, um, but it, the way it was just kind of wrapped, it, it's, um, you know, Peter Pan collar-esque, but asymmetrical um, and sheer, uh, so I'm thinking this is a, probably a Georgette um, that they worked pleats into. Um, but again, like frames the face, um, really brings attention up, um, you know, to the shoulders and even with some of the vertical uh, pleats, um, kind of keeps the, the style moving up. Um, and then the blouse on the right um, is a Gucci. Um, and again, that, that nice crisp Peter Pan collar, um, 
you know, again, I think for the fashion show, this one was styled kind of crazy. <laughs> so perhaps a little, little too many, one too many things going on. Um, but again, just a really nice, crisp, classic collar um, to, you know, frame the face. Okay. Right. And then another element of stylish necklines, perhaps you're trying to find a unique neckline, something that doesn't have a typical um, V-neck or, you know, scoop neck. Um, these were some of the examples of the galaxy dresses um, that uh, I guess swept Hollywood. I think all the actresses at the time wanted to have an interview uh, done in one of these dresses. Um, and again, the, uh, the green dress, on the left, uh, just this is just a really lovely, um, unique shape. Um, I could really see a, a nice necklace or even a, you know nice earrings uh, to complement um, the shape. And then same with the the white um, jacket and skirt as well. So really frames the face, kind of begs for a large fancy piece of jewelry. Um, but again, just something different um, that you maybe don't wear every day. Uh, certainly for a holiday party or um, you know, if COVID springs back up again and we're not traveling for Christmas, um, you know, something that you could wear that's festive uh, but would still look good um, if you have to have a digital uh, Christmas party. Okay. And then uh, these are also. Um, Dawn, can yes. I interrupt you one second? This is Diana uh -huh. again. Um, if you are not muted, would you please mute yourself, anybody in the group? And Dawn, would you mind making, if you know how, um, either Kathy Saladino or myself a co-host so that if we need to, we can um, mute other people so we don't get background noise? Okay. Um, I think I have to do that with the email address. Oh, don't worry about it then. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, if, uh, I, if I can um, change my view and then mute people as necessary as well. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, again, please, if you aren't muted, please mute your, no. Right. I see there's still a couple out there. Okay, <laughs> right, thank you. All right. Okay, um, and uh, now we're looking at the um, pleated and gathered neckline variations. Um, I will show some uh, pattern drafting uh, methods to accomplish these looks. Um, but I think these are really fun, just a, a sunburst pleat um, at the neck with a small collar, um, you know, like it looks like a shaped turtleneck style, um, but very flattering and actually very easy to take your um, bust and waist start and rotate that to the neckline. And this could be just a, a pattern hack from, you know, a pattern that you have um, or one that you were to buy. Uh, and then, um, I believe these pleats are inverted because they're, <clears throat> excuse me, folding towards the center, but you could turn your pleats either way um, and make box pleats um, or the inverted box pleats there. And then uh, on the right is a Brandon Maxwell uh, top and it looks like he's take, uh, taken the same um, idea, um, but kind of given it a bit of a high fashion twist. Um, so I remember looking at this top and I was not quite sure. It looks more pleated on the left, but then it's more gathered on the right. So I think it's just the, the thickness of the fabric that they're working with um, that really gives you this extra volume uh, at the neckline. And then just a, a classic little button up collar. I just thought that was like a, a lovely kind of surprise on a really modern top to put like a little classic collar. Um, and then has kind of a short capelet. You know, I thought Again, this top was so unique. I've never really seen anything um, like it. Um, but if you examine the individual pieces, um, it's not that uh, difficult to sew or accomplish if you wanted to make your own pattern for that. Okay. Okay, and then just talking about jewel necklines. Um, so a jewel neckline uh, fits you know, closely to the base of the neck. Um, the dress on the left, um, is uh, like a tooled leather. So <laughs> I know that may not be on the top of your sewing list right now, um, but I, I thought it was just really lovely um, that it's such a classic shape. Um, this is almost like just a sloper really um, with a jeweled neckline, the close fitting armhole and this lovely uh, bust art here 
Um, and I'm, I'm guessing this is the bust and waste start that's been rotated um, to the waste. So it gives a nice clean um, top and you would be able to embellish um, you know, that neckline and that bodice really however you'd want. Um, okay, and then working from the idea that if a shape like this is like a sloper, um, you could take those darts from the bodice and manipulate them uh, into this um, like woven uh, pleating pattern. And this is a, um, uh, a variation from the pattern magic books. So I don't know if you're familiar with those. Um, they are really incredible. I believe there's three out now, um, but she's a Japanese designer that really kind of works magic uh, with fabric and um, kind of, it almost looks like braided the way she alternates the pleats and stitches things down. Um, but again, it just, it all starts from a combined bus waist start that you can kind of expand slash and spread and uh, turn into these uh, woven patterns. Okay. Okay, and then just for some other necklines as well, um, just reimagining the classic trench coat um, and jean jacket. Uh, the left is an uh, Alexander McQueen. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting that it's a really classic British label. Um, you know, the, the trench coat is a staple piece, um, but she's uh, evolved. It's kind of the design has evolved into a dress but still has all of the pieces of the collar and lapel and the double breasted um, front that you would see uh, on a regular trench coat. But again, I think, I mean, they put nice earrings with this, but you could still see a nice necklace with that as well. Um, and then the same with the jean jacket. Um, I think this is a month's um, design, um, but I, I've been studying this one too, and it, it looks like they have either intentionally misbuttoned it or they actually sewed it kind of off kilter, um, but it does make it kind of interesting and exciting to um, break up these pieces. Um, okay. And <laughs> it's never a dull moment in my house, excuse me. <laughs> okay, yep. All right. Okay. And now this is the, these are the things that I, I really enjoy as well. So um, embellishing a yoke or a neckline uh, with beading and beaded appliques. Um, I think, uh, you know, the beaded appliques, you can really find those online now, certainly Etsy or some of the other fabric stores. Um, and that, you know, you can sew, um, you know, the appliques into an existing garment uh, if you were to cut out, you know, a t-shirt or things like that um, and then sew them in. And I think that's an easy kind of uh, fashion hack. Uh, that you could do to a ready to wear item. Um, and then again, the yoke on the left, just really encrusted um, with beads and sequins with a, a contrasting collar. So again, I think those would be lovely for um, holiday parties. Okay. Okay, and then again, just thinking about contrasting collars and cuffs, um, depending on the jacket or um, top that you're working on maybe, um, you have a, a similar or, um, a, you know, just a scrap left over from a project that, you know, you um, still love the fabric and maybe you can add some of that uh, into a top or um, a jacket that you're working on just to kind of shake things up a little bit. So, all right. Okay. And now we're going to, um, this is talking about um, being able to take your sloper or even a pattern if you were to buy, um, you know, a Vogue pattern or something that has um, a bust and waist dart or even just one dart um, that you can uh, turn that into um, a new style. So that basically um, you will draw in um, some slash lines and then you um, slash down to your apex. You close your bust and waist dart and then spread those open and that is the extra width that you need to create a gathered neckline, okay? Um, and I've also added some height here as well um, because width also needs length. So that if you only slash it horizontally, it'll be a little bit short and tight. So I'm not talking a lot, you know, it could be a half inch or less, you know, maybe just a quarter inch of shaping, um, but it, uh, you can then uh, gather all of that onto the neckline and you would still have a fitted waist. Um, and I've done that for both the front and the back. 
um, and using the, um, the apex at the shoulder and at the waist start to slash some of the volume into the neckline there. Um, and then the slashes that go to the armhole, um, those are just extra style. Um, it's not going to affect, affect the shape or um, the, uh, the bust or waist darts, okay? So that's front and back. And then depending on how much you want to slash and spread here, it's really full. It's just a little bit of fullness. Um, I think the lighter weight fabrics, uh, you can really add a lot of volume in there. Um, maybe something more of a medium weight, you don't need to slash as much because um, it will get kind of bulky. Okay. Right, and then this is um, uh, of the pattern for a top I'll show in just a minute, um, but you can do this with an existing pattern and you can um, hack something that you buy um, at the store. And I basically just went through and slashed into my pattern and spread the pieces apart and added some tissue and redrew my seam allowances. And that's really all I had to do to add gathering. Um, to the neckline. If I wanted to do pleats instead, then I could go through and true that up um, and just draw in the pleats instead of the gathers. Okay, and then this is the top that I made from that last pattern that you saw. Um, so this was a knit uh, and I've just, you know, slashed the front and the back and then gathered it onto a band that I could then um, just turn the band under um, and do a little hand sew, hand stitch um, to keep that down and in place. So um, it started out just a basic t-shirt pattern, um, but I just wanted to add a little bit of fun to it. Um, but I do have to say with the, the print that I chose, <laughs> um, it is a little busy. And, and of course I like that, um, but it's harder to see the gathering um, as a detail um, having used a print. And you can see that on the, um, the, the photo on the right. Um, so I, I'll, I think this when I technically considered my muslin, so this was the first time I sewed up this pattern um, after I, you know, drafted the pieces. Um, and then I'll probably make another one just out of solid and maybe we'll add a little bit more gathering. I think it could go even a little bit fuller on a lighter weight. Okay. Okay, and then looking again at the, um, the sunburst pleats. So using the same idea of finding the apex, um, some patterns do have this listed uh, or drawn. And if you can't find it, um, just draw a straight line out from the bust and the waist. And then where those two lines intersect is gonna be your apex, okay? And then you can slash your darts to your apex. You're gonna draw in where you want your pleats. And then you can slash through your new style lines slash through your old darts, close up your darts, and then voila, you've sent um, the fullness that used to be in the, the back pleating of the dart there to the neck, okay? And then um, the red lines, that's showing the, the stitching, you know, lines. Um, I do, you know, I do like to um, stitch at least the top of my pleats, um, not always, but it does kind of help control uh, the angle, you know, of the pleat. So you could send those over, and then depending on which direction you have your back pleating, um, you, again, you would have either a box pleat or the inverted box pleat. So on the, the gold top on the left, um, the back pleating is um, going out to the sides rather than the center front. Um, if it had been turned to the, if the seam allowance was turned to the center front, it would be a box pleat. So depending on the look that you're going for, um, you can play with that, you can alternate you know, the directions of the back pleating to work out um, different styles. Um, but if you haven't tried this, then I recommend doing it just once. <laughs> it's worth it, it's fun. Um, and I find that the, the dart manipulation is um, kind of addicting. I don't know, I like kind of coming up with new styles. Uh, okay, and that was the front. Okay, and then moving on. Um, I also wanted to talk about decorative yokes. Um, and the yoke is something that, um, you can easily, you know, you can find patterns that already have this. Um, and if it uh, doesn't come with it, then you can cut off the top of your bodice. And it's really no problem. Um, if you were to just draw in your style line first, if you want to get rid of those darts and rotate them around for some gathering and fullness, you can definitely do that. 
um, you just want to keep an eye on um, your the bust measurement across the, the top if you have ease in there um, so you just be aware of that so if you want to slash and spread to make a fuller top um, you can do that but just keep in mind um, how much fullness that you're adding um, but the yoke itself is still fitted um, it's uh, and again, a jewel neckline. And this was a really interesting um, basket weave that this was from Threads um, magazine. So you can probably find this image um, in their archive as well. Um, but I think this was a smocking technique. Um, but it's just beautiful and adds really lovely contrasting texture. Um, if you didn't want to have um, a separate fabric or things like that, but it really adds a lot of interest. Okay, and the yoke is just a great place to be able to um, experiment with your different um, textile techniques. Okay, and that's right. Okay, so I've been working on um, different variations of pin tucks. Um, and you can do on the left, you can see that it's one row uh, or one set of pin tucks that I've sewn um, across. And then um, to make the basket weave, then you turn it 90 degrees and then you sew those pin tucks again across um, your first set. And it makes that really lovely kind of diamond pattern, um, depending on your square or diamond, if you depending on how you have it turned. Um, but this te technique, I think, is lovely for yokes and collars and cuffs. Um, and again, it kind of adds texture and interest um, with your same fabric. You know, So if it's all just a mat uh, or the same color fabric, you can really um, add a new uh, dimension and texture to it. Okay, so this was the basket weave. And then I was also looking at um, the, the wave pin tucks. So I thought these were fun. I'm um, here, I'll go back just for a second. So the first ones, these were um, just eighth inch, like really tiny little eighth inch pin tucks um, to make that small gridded pattern. Um, but when I made the wave pin tucks, um, these were more like half inch because I wanted it just to be a little bit bigger. Um, but you basically sew your pin tucks, um, you know, as uh, just straight lines across. And then you can um, take the seam allowance and send it in different directions. So on the far right, I've pressed it to the top and then I'll sew it. And then I'll just work my way over and using my seam roll, I'll just press the, uh, the pin tucks in a separate direction and pin those down and same thing. So as I go, I'll, um, you know, just press a narrow strip to get it kind of sealed in place. So um, I think this has a really fun um, uh, texture that kind of works with like highlights and shadows um, to really add a lot of dimension and interest um, to your clothing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then moving on, another way to style your neckline, like who doesn't love an Hermes scarf? <laughs> it is just a fun, quick, um, easy way to add some color, um, texture, unique um, style to your look. Um, and I've also been trying to figure out how to um, uh, change up my t-shirts. T-shirts are a hard habit to break. <laughs> I want to make myself be a little more fashionable, fashion forward. Um, and I was, I've been playing around with adding scarves to t-shirts. And the first one is the scarf that I have um, that I ended up um, just uh, sewing snaps from the scarf onto the shoulder of my t-shirt so that I can wear it attached um, or which I think looks great like under a jacket um, but I do like to wear this scarf as well just kind of tied around the neck um, so I wanted to have that versatility um, and these snaps are like a four aught so they're really tiny um, and they don't show up like I mean you can't really see them um, from a distance. And certainly if you have the scarf tied, uh, you don't see the little tiny snaps. Um, but then this is just, you know, just versatile. Um, you can take the scarf off if you need to put things in the wash. Um, and again, you can um, style your scarf separately. Okay. And then working with another scarf idea. Um, this one I decided to just go ahead and sew down onto the t-shirt um, that I pleated it at the shoulders and then just sewed it down. And then I went back and added um, some pearls uh, to the neckline. It just kind of, I, I like bringing the idea of that polka dot kind of into the neckline um, and just having a little bit more fun 
uh, with things too. And I find I, um, especially if I'm shopping and I see beautiful beads, I tend to pick them up when I'm at the store. <laughs> so I'm trying to incorporate um, more beads into um, the, my, my sewing projects. Um, I think it's a lovely um, uh, finished edge, a lovely detail, a lovely embellishment. Um, and I'm kind of cleaning out my one stash too at the same time. So it's a win-win. Okay, so I had one scarf that I could remove I, on this top. Um, it's sewn down, but I found you can just turn it inside out and it goes to the wash without a problem. Um, and all the beads are just individually sewn down. Um, and I keep my knots uh, hidden under the bead. So that's one thing about um, stitching beads down. I tend to not like the, the knots on the inside of the garment because that can be kind of itchy, um, but you can hide them uh, under the, the bead on the top. Okay, <laughs> right, and did I say beads on a neckline? Yes, of course, yes, please. Um, and of course, this is a top that I'm wearing now. Um, and I have actually um, sewn all of the little beads uh, by hand, but with a back stitch, basically. And this top does go through the washer and I, I hang dry it. I'm not gonna push my luck with the dryer, <laughs> um, but it, uh, it's, um, like I said, just a back stitch um, sewn down and, uh, this is part of my how to upcycle uh, or uh, updress, excuse me, sorry, my cat wants on my lap. <laughs> okay, um, how to just embellish uh, t-shirts because I, I do feel like I have kind of a large t-shirt collection and you may be uh, in a similar situation, but I'm trying to um, just add a little interest and fun to those as well. <coughs> And then we have the beading and then, okay. So this is actually a trench coat that I'm working on as well. Um, and it's the same thing of, I have beads, I love beads. Let's try to add them onto almost anything. Like, can I add beads to that? Um, so these are also um, backstitched on. It's kind of has a, a longer traveling stitch, um, but I have um, just kind of carefully stitched it all around the edge of my collar. Uh, I think it's just kind of fun and interesting, um, and it's a different shape um, bead. So these are a little, um, a little taller. They're not the flat, tiny seed beads um, that I had in the last uh, picture. Um, so if you're working on, you know, a jacket or a top, um, you know, you can just get um, just a nice fine needle and some beads. Um, and I, I can kind of, I enjoy sitting down and maybe watching a movie and doing a little hand sewing. And then voila, you have a, a really lovely collar uh, when you're done. Okay, and then I also um, beaded the pocket flap um, and it goes around the back of the collar as well. Okay. Okay, and then um, another embellishment technique that I've been um, kind of exploring is actually is adding crochet um, borders um, to ready to wear garments. Um, I'm not sure what it is. But as soon as we get that first, you know, gush of cold air that's saying fall is here, I just have to get out some yarn. <laughs> and uh, I'm finding that being able to um, sew or crochet a border onto an existing sweater, um, you can. Um, I know you, it's like you get a new finished garment faster than trying to create an entire um, knitted or crocheted garment. Um, and it's fun. I think it's a nice um, way to, you know, create some uh, unique looks. So this was actually a sweater um, that was a hoodie that we never, my daughter never wore like a hoodie. So I just kind of um, you know, crocheted around the edge to make it a bit more of like a, um, a collar, like a flat collar. Um, and then uh, I guess this was the, the first one that I did. Um, this kind of that started me on this path of being able to um, crochet on um, ready to wear sweaters. Okay. And so this was another fun one that I'm working on as well. So um, I do love to crochet and I have loads of little crochet samples all over the house. And I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate them in my clothing more. Um, and I do like embellishing the sleeves and I will um, press the sleeves um, with a nice crease in it. And that gives me a nice straight edge to align motifs too. Um, so these are just some crochet, um, uh, you know, circles 
that I can add to the shoulders and down the length um, of the, the sleeve. And this was just a lovely little, like a small one skein project. Um, I think it was meant to be because I had exactly enough yarn <laughs> to make all eight and then I was done and they're so cute and, and I, you know, wasn't sure what to do with them and then, you know, just kind of playing around in my sewing room, um, I'll add them to the length of my sleeves. Um, and same thing, this is just um, acrylic yarn so I can turn it inside out and it goes through the washer, um, probably the dryer, but I tend to hang dry things just in case. Um, perhaps you can, I don't know if you knit or even your um, embroidery, if you have lots of embroidery samples from your embroidery machine that you don't know what to do with, um, go ahead and sew them on, you know, um, if it's flowers or, you know, any motif that you've been um, uh, experimenting with uh, that you can add. Right, okay, and then just keeping up with my uh, embellishing my sweaters um, that I've actually it's a chain stitch on the left but I'm not sure if you know of like the tambour beading but it's a similar technique where you um, uh, have your chain stitch and your either tambour or uh, crochet hook and you can create a chain stitch flat through the top of your surface of your garment um, so I've been adding this uh, to necklines and um, hems and then I have some vintage chenille yarn that I've always wanted to do like a couching kind of hand sewing uh, project. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know, with this sweater, it just, I, it, it's working out. Let me show you the next one. Right. So I'm just kind of playing on my sewing table and kind of draping the yarn. And then I'll go back and um, pin it down and then just kind of use a couching stitch um, to hand sew uh, it in place. Um, I have this on another um, uh, Halloween costume, basically, uh, but that it's a bit off season now. Um, but it's a, a fun, interesting technique. And I like to use contrasting thread as well when I do the hand sewing. Because um, if you're doing hand work, you might as well use the contrasting thread because it will um, just make your work pop. It adds like another layer, another dimension um, to uh, your project. Um, I, I think I've, I've spent enough years like hiding my hand sewing um, and now I really want to um, show, show it off, you know. Okay, so um, again, just embellishing uh, a ready to wear sweater. Okay, and then um, another way to add some style and interest to your neckline is uh, frog closures. I mean, um, they're classic, they've been around for a long time, but they're so lovely. Um, <laughs> this is actually um, a, uh, a sweatshirt that I made for my son, but I had just two frogs left over from another project and they matched so well <laughs> that I, I uh, got approval uh, to um, add something fancy um, to his uh, sweatshirt. Um, but again, even just with the fleece, it just stitches right on. And um, this was a, a collar, a contrasting collar um, that I made, um, you know, for his jacket, or I'm sorry, sweatshirt. So um, it was just a straight collar in the back with a full roll collar in the front. Um, but just something I, um, you know, do with pencil and paper and measurements uh, to create something new and fun for them. Okay. All right, <laughs> so just a real little recap, like I hope I have inspired you to create a new stylish neckline and uh, we will, I can continue doing some things on my table um, and we can open up for questions. Um, and uh, okay, and I don't know, Diana, did you want to um, do questions? Do you want to manage that or do you want me to um, do the navigation? What do you prefer? It's, it's, I, I don't mind. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Here, let me put a, let me put the uh, gallery view on. So if anyone has a question, I can see if you want to pop up. Um, okay, right. Jane, thank you so much. Um, inspiration, great. It's nice seeing you today. Okay. Um, uh, if no one else has a question, I've got one to start out with. Okay. I was a little confused. You talk about switching the darts from the side 
to the neckline, but yet it looked like you also, on the ones where you had the gathers at the top or the um, pleats at the top, you had left the darts in at the side. I thought I heard you say sew them closed, so I'm a little confused. Oh, um, right, yeah, I mean, I can, I'll show some of that on my work surface. Um, okay. But yeah, there. Um, when the, when you close the dart, it's to, it's in the pattern, so you don't actually. Um, it's not sewn. It's it's slashed and spread in the pattern and taped closed, so you don't actually ever sew the dart. Right. Yeah, it's all done in patterning form. I see. Right. Okay. And I can do some of that as well and show you um, real time. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Are there any other questions? And I'll I'll uh, switch cameras and show you the pattern pieces again oh, okay mm -hmm. okay go ahead jane so that was one of my questions so i love um there's a um indie pattern something begins with the t sweater where basically it's a raised neck with that they've moved the darts coming coming down from the neck so um with age my <laughs> My, my bust point is lower and I'm afraid of it. So is there any guideline for when you're having, I mean, with, with pleats, it's nice and soft. That's not an issue. I love a pleated shoulder and such, but with, I, I was trying to copy that pattern and I went, mm, you know, it's like what, three inches, oh, I mean, away from, Mm -hmm. So an inch and a half from my apex or three inches from my apex? You know what I'm trying to ask? Right, right. Um, Radiating darts from the neck. That's what I'm trying. Yes. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, it's funny that um, when you, and I'll, and I'll do this on paper as well, but when you um, move those darts around, a lot of it depends on how much ease is already in the bodice that you're working from. Okay. So once you actually start moving, <clears throat> excuse me, those darts, <clears throat> excuse me, there's not as much width to those darts to play with than you think. So that's why I usually slash an extra dart into the shoulder, things like that, that if you only move just the fitting darts, it's going to be a little small. Okay. So you actually right. have to add a little bit more movement, you know, for style. Right. <clears throat> so that's actually, so it's not a, really not a problem um, yep. to do that for sure. So. Okay. Thank you. That, that's sure. very helpful. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so let me switch cameras here. And I can, let me pin myself. And then let me make sure I'm lined up here. Oh, and there's my sweater and my computer. Okay. All right. So these were some of the, okay, my webcam's over here now. Okay, so let me show from the beginning. Some pieces here. So I have my, and it's funny, these are actually my little half scale slippers that I've been working with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have just our basic darted bodice. And if, like I said, if you have um, a pattern that you find um, at the fabric store, um, that had or online that has both a bust and waist or even just a bust that's going to give you um, some options. Okay, let me get my ruler and my bigger paper. Okay, Oops, let me grab my bigger paper. I'll be right back. Yeah, I've been looking through the pattern magic books again. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but her dart manipulation is just genius. It's really, really fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just trace off my bodice here. And I think I have this one just maybe glued to cardstock. So it's not even super thick, it's not a cardboard. So what I'm going to do, I will, oops, not shift it. Okay. 
Okay, and my apex is here. And I don't have a pinhole here, but if you need to find that. So what you're gonna do, you're actually gonna draw through the center of your darts. If your pattern is not, uh, does not have an apex marked. Okay, you're gonna draw through the end dart, the dart end point. Okay, and then X marks the spot. Okay, and that could be, you know, wherever your bust dart is. Okay, and then, so I want to make a sunburst neckline, but this is a jewel neckline. That's pretty close up to the top of um, the neck. So I'm gonna open this up just a little bit, just for some style and comfort. Okay, and then let's say I want a dart here. And we can alternate them. We can do longer and shorter. You can do all the same length. You have some options. Okay, right. So now, cut this out. I know where my bigger scissors are. Let me get my bigger scissors. Okay, and this pattern um, does not have seam allowances. So I usually do all the um, dart mani no, manipulation and style changes um, to my pattern before I add seam allowance because it sometimes you do enough changing through the body of the pattern that that's not worth adding the seam allowances just yet. Okay, so now I'm going to start slashing. Okay, and I'm going to slash through the center of my dart up to my apex on the waist and the bust here. And I like to trim out one side of the dart seam allowance. Just kind of gives you a nice uh, edge to tape to when you're doing your alignments. Okay, so now I want to make some decisions. So I have my new darts here and I want to decide which darts are my, of my new starburst that I want to uh, use my shaping from the bust or waist dart and then which ones are purely decorative that I can send to the shoulder. So I know my center front dart, I'm just going to do some dash lines here. So I'm going to draw from the first three darts to my apex. Okay, and then the last two I'm going to send to the shoulder. Okay, and this looks like, I'm gonna make a little mark there about where the darts are ending. Let me raise this up so you can see. Okay, so this portion here, let me, I'll, I'll get a pencil and darken that in a different color. So this is where my new starburst uh, pleats are going to be. The dash line is just gonna give me that avenue to go back to the apex. And then the uh, two starburst pleats on the, that are closer to the shoulder, they're just gonna go to the armhole, okay? Mark this. So this is ultimately going to be our finished dart. Let me slide some other paper under here. Okay, and then I'm going to slash. I'm gonna slash through my new dart and then down to the apex. This is probably the only tricky part is to not not cut all the way through because that does happen. <laughs> you can kind of cut too far and pieces fall apart, but that's okay. That's what tape is for. 
All right, and I'm actually still doing my slashes on an angle, okay? It's not a straight cut, so it's from my dart and then angles over to the apex, okay? Now, the ones um, that are just purely decorative, they don't have the bust or waist fitting. Those just go right over to the shoulder. Okay, and then I'm gonna tape this down onto my new paper. And I like to start by closing the fitting darts. And I use little tiny pieces of tape because you tend to get lots of tape all at once. Okay, so I'm gonna close my waist dart and just tape it down. Okay, and then I'm gonna close the bust dart. And then automatically that opens up everything up here at the top. Okay, let's take this other front down as well. All right, and then I can start moving these darts around. Okay, so this is my new one, two, three, first three darts. So let me shift those and then take them down. And that this is basically the space that used to be in the inside of the dart is now moved up here. Once I tape it down, I'll raise it up a little bit higher to the camera. Okay. Now for the shoulder, I'm not going to the apex. I'm just going to the shoulder, uh, or excuse me, to the armhole. So I'm gonna spread those about the same amount that I have here. Okay. And then the length of the armhole has not changed. So that when you go to sew in your sleeve or your facing, um, you don't really have to um, alter that. Um, it can, you know, sometimes I'm, the ones I've been working with sometimes want a little bit of reshaping. Um, that it puts this uh, shoulder seam on a greater bias angle. So you might have to take that in a little bit. Um, okay, and let me raise these up to the camera. Okay, oh. I, know I get a lot of bright sunlight in here, so my camera wants to darken a little bit. Okay, so now we have five new darts. And then let me darken those up again. So we have one here, and then here. Okay, but you can probably see that the neckline is a little irregular, okay? So from slashing and spreading everything, uh, it's not quite smooth. So that's that's a, that's fine. We can just go through, and I just kind of draw it in myself. But you want to add a little bit of height, and then just make this nice and smooth. We can clean that up at the center front, and then if you want to. Um, I mean, if, at this point, you could just stop and say, okay, these can be pleats, and I won't finish them, I won't make the endpoints, but if you wanted to, you could say, right, so this uh, red sews to here, and this one to here, and across, so you could just pleat those at the top, but if you wanted to do the darts, then you just go ahead and redraw your darts in. And some of this is just depends on how, you know, how, um, how deep you want your darts, how shallow, um, a little bit of, um, you know, trial and error. And I guess, I guess, Jane, that would go back to your question as well. Like how long or short do you want the darts to be? Um, some of that is a style question because um, your uh, um, neckline has all of the ease. Your bust measurement has not changed. This is your bust line through here. Okay. But we do have some ease through the center here where the end of the darts. So there is some, uh, this portion of the, the pattern is uh, some ease. So that's almost like a preference. So the tighter you want those darts to fit, um, the closer, um, you know, to your uh, upper chest, then the longer your darts would be. 
if you don't mind having just a little bit of fullness, if your fabric is soft or lighter weight, you can use a, a shallower dart. And I'll just go back in and draw in my darts. Um, you can keep track of your dart lengths, which one I think I want this one a little, a little longer. So it's just a matter of angling your new dart seam allowances where you want it because you're not, you're not changing the fit at this point, at least not greatly. You're kind of um, uh, just shifting around the ease that's been created. All right, let me get a blue pencil and then draw in, you can see where our new starburst darts are. Mm -hmm. I'll hold that up. Okay. And then that's your blue, the blue lines are then your, the seam allowances for your dart. Okay. And then, then you can just go through with your pattern. And I generally use like a half inch seam allowance now. I'm just, the, when I draw my own patterns, I, it's just easier um, than five eighths. And I, I still think five eighths seam allowance is kind of bulky. Um, I'm guessing on a, a top like this, you would want it on the fold and not have a seam up the center front. So I'm going to cut that on the fold and then add your shoulder seam allowance and side seam and a little bit of armhole. Right, and the just takes a little more effort doing the curves. Mm -hmm. Right, and like I said, we haven't changed the length of the armhole. Um, so your sleeve will still fit in. Okay, and then let's add our little seam allowance at the waist. Okay, and you are ready to cut. <laughs> All right. So are there any questions um, on what I just did? Well, not a question really on what you just did, except that um, I was going to show you a neckline I have, but you're wearing it. So mm -hmm. the neckline that you have on, mm -hmm. if I, I have a dress like that with, uh, you know, it's kind of a little wide at the shoulders. Mm -hmm. and if I lean over, and it's not a knit, it's a woven fabric. If I lean over, because I'm really small on top, you could see all the way down my dress to neckline to my waist. Mm. What do I do with it? Would something like this help to close that neckline gap? Yeah, you could. If there's enough ease through the top of the dress, you could add some small pleats across the neckline. Um, and even just pleat it through that finished edge and that will help draw the neckline in um, for sure. And like I said, you could add some beads or anything like that and make it look intentional. Um, if it's a starburst dart or even um, like a little pin tuck or something, mm -hmm. um, that would help. Um, it is harder to put fabric back in when it's already been cut away. Um, but if you wanted to, you could add um, even like a sheer, um, you know, applique or fabric or something, you could maybe try to build up the neckline um, and add uh, like a bias, um, you know, fabric or something contrasting that you could kind of, you know, raise it up. Okay. Thank you. All right. Oops, sorry. I got to call them back. Don, can we, uh, this is Jane again, and uh -huh. this, is, this is fabulous. You're, uh -huh. you're really, you're like, oh my God, this is exactly what I want to make. Um, <laughs> would you go back over again? So those original flash lines that you made mm -hmm. for the five oh, art locations. What's going on, sorry. That's okay. And you did that because I like the, um, the those differing heights. Uh -huh. um, 
but when you but now what i look at i'm seeing like okay you made those you made it longer so i'm like right. i'm hitting i'm pointing at my screen like you can see it <laughs> right right yeah no, no no i see what you mean i see what you mean yeah i think when i like when i because i think i had stopped them here but yes. that was probably more for a pleat so i think yeah i think that's the the red lines kind of stopped here and right. it, that was more for a pleat so if you want a dart that's gotcha. all the way down then yeah it would need perfect, to be perfect perfect thank you sure. yeah mm -hmm. good thank you for the clarification uh-huh um, i have a question uh -huh. um if you were planning to make them um into darts would you recommend um i guess pressing them towards the outside or would it be better to cut them and pr press them flat right um right you know uh moving the dart seam allowance around it, it gives you um some choices but let me get my i've got some pleat samples here too right so i know this is just a, a straight pleat rather than you know the starburst that we're talking about but um depending on how you move um the your dart seam allowance around um you know if it's if it overlaps in the back you can definitely cut that out, right? Um, and then in this case, if the seam allowances are pointing together, it's gonna make a box pleat. And then if they're pointing away, then it'll make kind of the inverted box pleat. So you have a choice at the center front. How, oh my goodness, I don't, my phone has not rang this much. Okay, I'm so sorry. Hello? Okay. Sorry, my son's friend, he's just going to keep calling. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So at the center front, you have some choices. If you want to have your seam allowances go together, and that would make a box pleat, or if you want them away to make that inverted box pleat. So um, if you were to like trim this out and you, I mean, I guess you could press it flat open i guess if, if that's what you mean you, you press them open with seam allowances on each side um that's also a box pleat uh, it would just be a really small one so you technically could do that too if it was if it was pleated um to have your seam allowance kind of centered let me see if i have one of those i was looking no i don't think i have my box pleat one with me um but you could do that as well you can if you wanted to just flatten your seam allowance then it would make like a little inverted box plate here, like that. Cool, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can, like I said, you can you can dart them, you can pleat them. It just depends on how, um, really, the style that you're going. Because on the neckline, it's going to be about the same. If you wanted something really really full, um, you could actually slash more into um, the body of the garment. And then if you wanted something kind of loose and flowy, then you'd be adding extra width throughout the body there. Um, this one is probably more like a fitted style. So it's gonna be exactly your bust and waist and all of the decoration um, is up at the top. So, um, and I guess Jane too, your question as well, you could just decide like if, if I want this one dart like way down here, then you just connect these points and then draw it longer. So the important thing is the distance here at your seam allowance, because that's what's going to um, fit your neck again properly. So if you wanted this longer or shorter, uh, you know, just be aware that the longer the darts are, the more tightly fitted it's going to be at right. the upper chest. And then the shorter these darts are, you're going to have a little bit more fullness here. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a fabric issue. So if it was like a linen or something, you could really draw those deeper and it would be crisp. Mm -hmm. um, but if it was something, you know, crepe de chine or something, you would probably um, have a little bit more ease and it would lay nicely against the body anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right, good. All right. Are there any more questions about the darts? No? Okay. <laughs> Right, and you can do this on the front, and then you can also do this on the back. The back is a little bit more complicated um, because you're working with different um, bust points, but it's not impossible. 
So if you, um, uh, if you extend your shoulder dart uh, in full scale, this is probably like an inch and a half. Um, if you extend the center of your shoulder dart, that's gonna give you the apex at your shoulder and same thing at the waist. So if you just keep drawing through the center of that dart um, out for about an inch and a half, you'll get that next apex. And I do like um, you know, uh, being able to split these up a little bit. So the um, darts that I put towards the center back, two of them I could slash here to the waist dart. And then my little shoulder dart actually turned here. So this is the shoulder dart. So it closed here and I rotated it here. And then this last dart goes to the armhole and it's just decorative. So all of the fitting is just in the first three here. And the last one is just a slash and spread. And then you can do the same thing. Do you want just pleats and you just draw in the first inch or if you don't wanna stitch your pleats down, that's fine too. You just pleat them and then you sew it down at your seam allowance to your collar or your facing um, or you know, however you wanna finish your neckline. Um, but then you can almost see how these would kind of be you know, the darts as well. And you can move them around a little bit if you need to um, kind of even up how the, the sunburst is kind of radiating. As long as you stay within, you know, your dart circle radius, which is about two inches across, um, you can repoint those, um, those darts as long as they kind of fall within the range of those circles. So that if you want them to be more evenly spread, um, you know, have, have more um, of a pattern to their direction. You know, you can kind of, um, you know, uh, re redirect them, I guess, to be as even as you want. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. And let's see here what else do I have. And then I have another, I'll show you one as well, that um, instead of going through the neckline, I actually sent some darts to the shoulder. And I can, I think I have my pieces here. Yeah, this one's a little better. So I, same thing, I started with my, okay. so I started with my sloper or my darted bodice. You have your waist dart and your bust dart. I drew in where I wanted the pleats at the shoulder, kind of at a nice angle. And then I slash everything at the same time. I think that one's a little wobbly. Okay, so you can um, slash everything down to your apex and then close up the waist and bust dart and that creates the space at the top. And then you can go ahead and draw in either your um, pleats or your darts, however um, you want to see that. Um, Cause it's, like I said, it's the same um, amount in the back pleating. Um, if for either gathers or pleats or darts. And then, um, then you can just sew, you mark these and then sew um, one side to the next. You can label those if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to send your uh, pleats to the shoulder rather than the neckline. So we'll do a side by side on those. Right, so you have options. Okay. All right. Don, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. In that last back piece that you just showed us, mm -hmm. you, you had a slit going past the uh, apex radius, not that piece. Um, a front piece. This one? Yeah. Oh, is that the front? Let's see. Anyway, yeah. you go down past the radius down towards the waist. Right, yeah. okay, yeah, let me you show this a little bit. Yes, yes, thank you, for, thank you for pointing that out. Um, yes, I actually wanted more ease in my garment. So you can, you can do that as well. Um, I knew with the pleats that were up at the shoulder that I didn't want it as quite as tight. So that yes, you can slash through here and then cut through to your waist. So my waist measurement is still the same, but I added more ease to the lower portion of the garment. And you know, if you really wanted to, you could do that for any of them. Um, you know, it's just a matter of keeping track of where you're slashing and where you're adding that extra volume. 
Sounds and then good. also another question, right at the shoulder right now, that shows it kind of circular, but I assume when you sew it together, it would be straight. Exactly, right, because um, width wants length. So that it's, it's funny how you, if you take a straight line and wrap it around the body, it looks like a curve. But if you wrap a curve line around the body, it becomes straight. So yes, so I would, I mean, I would add a little bit more, um, let me draw on my next one. I'd probably add a little bit of um, ease here too. So I don't wanna change my neckline. I want that to be exactly the same, but I'm going to choose probably the highest point um, because I want to add um, <coughs> notes. Um, if you, I'm sorry, ease. If you didn't, you can always um, just put a dot on the center of each of the slashed pieces. And then you just kind of do a connect the dot. If you have, if you're working with something that maybe has a little bit of stretch, um, but I generally find it's easier, <clears throat> excuse me, to take the ease out later, <clears throat> excuse me, than it is to try to add it. So I'm going to add just a little bit of height here. Okay. Thank you. And then once that, yeah, exactly. And then once that either gathers or pleats, then yes, it'll be uh, straight. And then that's some of the width um, and uh, that comes down to the bust. So absolutely. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> okay, good. All right, are there any other questions? Okay. <laughs> All right. And then I'll just show some other patterns that I've been working on that um, my, my, I left my half scale dress warm at school, so I can't try too many things on. Um, but I, I wanted to show you too a pattern that I'm working on. Um, just again, just something with, you know, dart manipulation and how can I change my style. So um, I wanted to do something with like a kind of an Asian flair. Um, and basically I just drawn in my style lines first and you can, you can totally um, convert your little straight dart to a curve. So I will go through next and slash all my darts, slash my angled pieces. Um, I will have extra here because you can see how the dart is um, uh, here. So I can, I can choose. Do I wanna close that up completely or do I wanna leave some ease? I'm probably gonna close that up completely. And when I do that, I'll have to just kind of uh, re-trim or recurve that uh, shaping just a little bit. And then I'll send my bust dart to the top style line and then my waist dart to the lower style line. So I'm excited to do this one. And when I sew this version up, I'm gonna do a contrasting fabric, um, contrasting color through the center. And then I thought, okay, so if I have this cool front, what can I do with the back? And then I came up with this. So same thing, I can take my shoulder dart and then rotate it to this style seam here. And it's okay if I kind of shift my pivot point over here. So I'll close it up here, but then when I slash it, it's okay to slash to a new corner because it's so close to my bust circle, or I'm sorry, to the dart circle. And then same thing with the waist. So I'm gonna slash it up to my apex here and then send that waist dart to my new style line. And then same thing, add like a curved, or I'm sorry, a contrasting color um, through the center. So it's just another way to um, uh, move your darts around and don't be afraid of curved darts. Like is, if you go through and just add notches on all those seams, they're the same length and it'll sew, um, it'll sew back up. Um, it's also a matter of the kind of fabric that you have if, um, if it wants to, um, so nicely, you know, a really stiff fabric maybe won't handle the, the bias as well. Um, but you can see here's a, an earlier version. So this was just kind of mapping out where I need all those darts to go and then added um, the thickness to the, the style points. Okay, so I look forward to this one and now I need to come up with something fun for the skirt. So maybe, you know, kind of mirroring this idea um, of the contrast and put that panel, this kind of decorative chinoiserie uh, strip down onto the skirt. And actually I can show you my slopers here too. So I could probably do that as well. So this, if I do like a fun little curvy shape here, same thing, I'll just close up the waist starts from the skirt and send them to the new curvy style lines. So as long as it's within 
my little dart circle. And that's about full scale. It's about a two inch circle at the end of your dart and then everything will still fit. So I am working on um, like making my samples or my patterns in half scale first, because I feel like I get a lot of my design ideas out and it doesn't take um, as much fabric to do the first round of slopers um, and samples. And then I can put these in the printer and really just print them out 200% in their full size. So I have half scale slopers that are my size. Um, so for me, <laughs> just being in the half scale world has, has been really fun. Um, and here I have one more, one more dress to show. Um, I may have shown this in another meeting, but this is really, really cute. Um, may, may I ask a quick question? Sure, sure. It's, this is Bonnie. Uh -huh. I, Hi. I have seen um, some patterns that I haven't purchased that have uh, interesting um, pieces that run through the bodice. Mm -hmm. And I was going to draft, draft them off my sloper, except none of the pieces crossed near the bus point. Mm. There were no darts. But they didn't cross, they were like way above or way below. I mean, there, there might even be several of them. And I got confused on to how I could move my darts when they didn't go to the bus point. Right. Um, were the patterns for a knit? Because um, that's where, if it, yeah, you do have to check. So most of the um, uh, dart manipulation and moving your darts for style um, is generally for a woven. Um, cause you can break a lot of rules with your darts with a knit because, um, the stretch in the fabric will, um, uh, I don't know, it will allow you to, um, kind of cheat going to your apex. Um, if it's a style line that's up here, um, there's no fit in it. So it's, it's really no problem. So I'm guessing some of those seams would just be decorative and not have, um, any fit in it. So you, cause you do um, want with the, the, um, the style lines, if you're trying to shift a dart there, they do need to go through at least the dart circle. And that's about two and a quarter to two and a half inches approximately. Um, smaller sizes of course would be closer to two inches, you know, up to three or, or three and a half inches um, depending on your size chart. Um, so I just look at the pieces and figure out um, maybe they slashed it in such a way they only want just style lines um, and look at the overall uh, style of the garment. If it's basically a loosely fitted top, they may have taken out the dart, the dart, uh, excuse me, the darts to begin with and then just only did style. So if it's kind of loosely fitted, you know, they maybe didn't do any dart manipulation. Um, but uh, thank you. The, yeah, one okay, thing, good. <laughs> the one thing I didn't look because it was just a pattern online, right? What, what fabric? Right. I had, a, you know, I, in my mind, I'm thinking woven, but yes, that makes perfect sense that if it was a stretch fabric. Yeah. I didn't have to be concerned with it. Thank you. Right. Yeah, sure. Enjoy. I know it's, it's fun. I'm, 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 I'm trying to make more, like use more fabrics in, in a, the same garment lately. So, um, but yeah, this was a little, this was a dress too that I, that I've made. So this was a little diamond bodice. And it's basically the same, and I can get the pattern here. It's the same uh, procedure of moving your darts um, for decorative purposes. Um, so the bust dart is here, the waist dart, again, waist darts, and then the bottom of the diamond is just style. And then it has a diamond on the back as well. So my cute little half scale dress forms, like, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, and let me show you the pattern for this. Okay. So same thing, just moving darts around. I have a question while you're looking for the pattern. Yeah. How do you do, um, if you wanna change a neckline in a, on a knit shirt mm -hmm. um, that doesn't have any darts or anything, would mm -hmm. you do similar just slash and spread without mm -hmm. yes yes you can um if if it's um a bodice that doesn't have any darts in it then the pattern maker has already taken those darts out but yes you can slash and spread um really anything then if you wanted to do the neck or the shoulder um but i would just be aware of keeping it 
probably two inches above your bust line so that it won't um, alter the fit greatly um, of your garment so that you can do lots of things, you know, to the neck, you know, probably from halfway uh, above the armhole up, you can change all of that um, for style. And then the, the lower portion with the bust and the waist would not change. Um, so yeah, I'd say slash and spread and have fun. <laughs> um, if you need to add a dart later, that's, that's something different, but um, you could just do all style. And if there's no dart, you don't have to worry about um, incorporating that fit dart into um, the new pattern. Thank you. Okay. And then, so this was, this is that diamond. So I just drew in a new style line to my apex from the center front at the neck and the waist. I slashed everything, closed up those waist darts, um, and do put notches. If you're cutting out like whole separate pieces, go ahead and put notches on those new seams um, before uh, uh, you cut them apart. It's a little easier to do that first. Okay, and then and then the back as well. So same thing. I think with the back here, I actually kind of created my own um, like combined bust point between the shoulder and the waist. Um, I took an average of the two, and then I could uh, draw my new style line from the center back neck to my combined um, uh, back apex, and then again from the waist up. So, um, and working, you know, really when you do a lot of dart manipulations too, just plan on at least one muslin, because there'll be something about the combination of a new pattern plus a new fabric that once you try it on, you're like, oh, okay, well, I need to add a little bit more ease on the side seam or my shoulder you know, things like that. So um, when you really move darts around, um, you know, just give yourself extra seam allowance um, to kind of work on the, the ease and the fit. Okay. And then that's the pattern again for this one. So the dart, and I'm actually working on a circle one as well. So I did the diamonds and this piece is so funny. It's like almost, almost difficult to see what it is, but um, so this is actually, okay here. So this is the back. I haven't cut this one out yet. So I wanted to do the same idea of the triangle, except do circles instead. So I drew in a, a circle for the back and then I added my notches. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I have a little darted line here um, and I can either send my shoulder dart to um, a, an arc cut out at the shoulder or I can send it over to um, the center back. I'm probably going to send it to the center back because I think it's going to fit a little better. Um, and then I also have another little dotty line right here so that when I slash through my dart, I'll slash there and then just kind of jot over to my new style line. And that's within my dart circle. So I can kind of cheat that way. And then I'll send the waist dart actually all the way up here and then the shoulder dart here. And then I did the same for the front, but I've cut this piece up. I've already cut this one apart. So <laughs> this one's almost unrecognizable. So let me, let me flip it this way. You can kind of imagine what it's gonna look like. So there's a circle here, and then there's a circle here, and then a circle, Ooh, I didn't, I'm not cut that one out. And then a circle here. So you can kind of see how uh, those will, Ooh, let me get back in camera, there we go. So you can see how the circles will kind of get laid out. And this is the, my design sketch. So I wanted to try something interesting with the circles. Um, I can cut on a center front fold at the top, but you do have to have a dart at the waist just to be able to um, kind of make that happen. So it's a it's on a center front fold here, but then this is kind of on an angle. So as it curves around the body, it's going to look about like that. But then I'm doing like a contrasting dot in the center as well. And then my shoulder, I cut it out, or I started to cut it out, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, I can cut this shoulder on the fold. So this, the arc that's cut at the shoulder will be the same piece from the front and the back. So there's a little bit of shoulder seam closer to the neck, but then it's cut on the fold and will wrap around like a, a half circle, maybe like a half semicircle. So I look forward to working with this one and then again, figuring out how to cut out my how to change my skirt darts as well um, to make that circle. So just something fun. Okay. And then, <laughs> right, does this, I know this piece, piece doesn't really make much, much sense, but do you kind of see how this is like the lower portion of my armhole? And then 
this fits back in. And this, this shoulder arc oop, is just style. I don't, in the front, I don't have any fit in here. So I can change that however I want. But you can kind of see how the, the piece goes back together. So I think when I first made this one, I couldn't decide if I wanted to do the, the shoulder and waist circles. And then I was like, well, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, let's do a bunch. <laughs> but I can tape those back in place if I only wanna have just the center front um, circle instead. Right, and then, so the front piece, it kind of, it started out like this as well. So I just drew the circle that I wanted and then moved all my darts around and then uh, traced over it to cut out separate pieces. So. Okay, <laughs> right. I know everyone, I, I know you wanna try the circle cutouts right away. <laughs> okay, all right. So does anyone have any other questions? Uh, it's Bonnie again, I do. Uh huh. I have um, a sloper that I work from. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's 100% sloper. Mm -hmm. Now that I have that, can I back it down to a quarter size sloper that you have or is it something I have had to have first? Right. I mean, if you have um, a sloper that already fits you and it's full size, um, if you, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think if you go to like the copy store and have them scan it, if they have a large enough scanner, then they can reduce it by 50% and print it out. And then that's your exact sloper and half scale. Oh, it's a half scale sloper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. The, my quarter scale ones are little teeny tiny. So yeah, I mean, and through the camera, you can't really see um, the difference. But yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I didn't know if I just measured it and just reduced everything by half if that would work. But it the math sounds very complicated. I mean, you could. I think um, uh, reducing all of the straight lines in half is pretty easy. But trying to get the angles to reduced yeah. in half scale would be a little bit harder. Um, I, I, I love my photocopier. <laughs> I use my photocopier on my sewing room for, for like everything. So every version, you know, I'll pop it in the copier and, <clears throat> you know, um, just uh, keep printing out pieces. And I, I do have a large printer as well. I've got like an 11 by 17. So I feel like I can cheat a little bit and my slopers fit in there, um, at least the half scale ones. Um, but yeah, I think if you were to um, have it um, scanned, or even if you have a, a, even if you photograph it and you can really get a really nice flat, clean image, um, then you could you know, just keep a measuring, um, measuring tape or ruler in there with you. And then you could probably just um, reduce it as far as a, 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 a JPEG image too, if you were to do um, a photo as well. Oh, yes, that's, mm -hmm. that's intriguing. That's, that's a yeah. possibility. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Scale. I know scale's fun. <laughs> well, I've never thought of working in a smaller one. It's just more sewing, but I can now see that it wouldn't work necessarily for fit. But if I want to experiment with what, not quite the circles you're doing. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. The circles, that's just me. <laughs> it would be yeah. faster and easier that way. Okay. It Thanks. is. Yeah, it is. And it's really fun to, um, because you, you can still see the overall style. Like even though the dress is in half scale, like you kind of know if you like it or not. You know, you could say, oh, well maybe I don't, I want it wider, I want it narrower. Like you're, because it's in proportion, your brain can still make that gap and say, okay, um, I like the style. And then now I can, um, you know, scale it up and, and fit it. So it's, I think it's a great like style so manipulation tool. Oh, good. Don? Yes. Uh, your Asian pattern you were working at showing how to put the darts in the rounded way? Uh -huh. Exactly. Can you explain that a little more? Uh -huh. Sure. Um, let me, right, you know what? Let... I have the same question as Sherry. I don't understand where the apex of the dart is, where the point of the dart is on that, on that curvy one. Right, okay. Um, you know, it's funny, let me, Speaking of my photocopier, let me pop this in the photocopier and then I can draw on it just a little bit more. I'll be right back. Sherry, sorry to tag on to your question. I don't know if that was part of it or not. 
Well, I just wanted to know how she worked that into that circle. I, I think I understand some of the others, but I'm not sure about that one. That's fine. Help us all out. <laughs> hey, Diana, did you see that I, I sent you a note in the chat? Yes, I responded. Oh, uh, I will look. <laughs> OK, so let me get a brighter pencil here so we can see that a little better. OK, so you can see the basic um, darts that are in here. And let me draw through the center. So if you're trying to find where your apex is, it's X marks the spot. So you're going to go through the center of both your bust, oops, I'm a little off there, through your bust and waist darts. Okay. And then that's going to give you your apex. So let me draw that a little darker here. I think my pencil's a little thick, so I'll just imagine it like that. Okay. And then when I go, I'm going to cut through the center. That's my apex. And then I'm going to cut through the bust dart. And then I like to just cut out some of the side seam allowance on that dart. Okay, so I have my basic sloper fitting darts. They're free. Okay, and then I'm going to come back over to my new style lines. And then cut through those. Oh, wait, no, no, notch. That's why I always, I always forget, I get so excited, but you have to notch these first. It really helps. Um, it's harder to align that later and figure out how to get those pieces back together. So let's notch those. And then let's just go ahead and trim this extra off. We don't need this here. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut through my style line. That is going to become a curved dart because even though it's a curve, each side of that seam is the same, okay? And actually, let me take these one at a time. So then now I'm gonna move that uh, waist dart over and then take that down. And that's really just a classic curved dart here. Okay, so the bust dart is a little trickier because I need to um, keep, actually, let me think about this just for a second. What if I, okay, so I'm going to, since, my, um, this point here is not exactly at my apex. I'm just gonna close that up a little bit and I'm gonna tape it shut inside my dart circle. So I'm gonna close up that dart right to my new style line. So, okay. so it doesn't fall apart. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, because I'm still within that dart circle, that basically means it's still gonna fit. And then I'm gonna cut this up to here. And then this little piece, I can go ahead and tape that over. And then same thing, my, even though it's a curve, those links are the same because I taped it shut down to the end of that style line. Okay, and then if I wanna make that into a contrasting piece, then there it is. Sorry, I've got so much on my table right now. Okay, All right. So that this technically sews up, so there's no, let me raise it up for you. So there's no fit at the center front, but you can see now that it's flat, that's where my darts went. And then I'll just go ahead and finish off this piece. Let's add some more notches. So I know where to realign everything. And then let's just cut the rest of this apart. Yeah, I ordered a, a bolt of each color of my, this aqua and turquoise so that all these little samples that I make are kind of in the same color family. So I'll probably do a bold turquoise for this little contrasting piece here and then Right, so then you see those pieces that you end up with, but then once you recombine, oh. your center front is on the straight grain and you have a waist dart and a bust dart. Interesting. 
<laughs> so, yep, and it's just, like I said, it's just finding that apex. And as long as you have at least one dart, um, if you only have a bus dart, you can still find your apex also. So that, um, let me find my front piece again. So that if you um, go through the center of your bus dart and extend it maybe an inch and a half, um, straight through then and add a dot then that's where your apex is going to be because i think this is half scale and this is pretty tight so yeah that's about an inch so if you wanted to give it like another inch or so and that's the nice thing about the the bus circle is that as long as the end of your dart fits within that bus circle it's still going to fit you know even if it just touches the edge you know if your dart ends over here then no, it's not gonna fit the bus properly. Um, but you're, like I said, it's about a two inch rate, um, radius around uh, or circumference um, around from the bus point. So as long as those little bits end up um, inside that circle, you've maintained your fit. So, okay. And then that's this little piece here. Okay. <laughs> Did I take some of the mystery out? <clears throat> Let me tape this back together and I can hold it up. So your dart is always built into the space between the contrasting colors. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't know, I mean, that's kind of my thing. Um, I think a lot of designers do that as well, but I always want to incorporate fit into new style lines because if I didn't do this, I could still have this dart here. I could still put a bus dart there, but it's unnecessary. Like you don't really need yeah, I don't know, you just don't need to do that. And it looks kind of sloppy or it looks a bit like pattern drafting software, <laughs> dare I say, sorry about that, you know? Um, okay, right, right, thank you, Karen. Okay, and then, um, right, like I said, uh, you know, you can do these kind of curved darts anywhere. If you wanted to do that to your center front, you could send them to your armhole, you could send it to the shoulder. As long as those darts end up back at the apex, it will still fit. So what do you do with the side seam then on this one that you just showed us that you have in your hand? Uh-huh, right. So then on each pattern piece, I'll just add si a side seam uh, seam allowance on the end. So, I mean, do you just, do you straighten that up at all or? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, once you sew your dart, then that's where your shaping is. So see how it's a little harder to see through the camera, but now it's a, a curved shape. Now you have like bus curve in there. So once you sew those curved seams, then your side seam is straight again. Very cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the magic of darts. I know, it, it always hurts my feelings a little bit when everybody talks about they hate darts. I'm like, no, no, darts are the gateway to like style and fun and adding interesting things. So they're not always bad. Um, I understand if you don't want a dart in your t-shirt, that's totally cool. Um, but if you have one in your, in your pattern, then um, don't think of it as this like ugly old fashioned dart thing. Just think of it like a, an avenue to a new style or something cool or pleats or darts or curved seams or something fun. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So are there any other questions or something that I can explain further? Dawn, when you do those notches, mm -hmm. do you normally do them before you cut it apart so that it, they're exactly Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, okay. notch it before because it's a lot harder than to try to take those curves yeah. and re you can do it, but it just takes a lot longer to do that. So if you can, um, yeah, if you can do it first, it's a lot, it's a lot faster. I do that too on, on those. Sometimes I get excited and I start cutting and I'm like, no, I forgot my notches. So um, it's a, it's definitely a good thing. And even on, um, you know, the straight darts too, especially for the curves, but it's a good thing also for the straight darts. So you draw in your new style line and then you notch it and then slash your new style seams and you slash your old darts and then close up the old darts and spread the new style seams. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. You said you were, uh, that you left your half scale dress form at school. Are you in like design school? Do you oh, teach? I, I teach, yes. Um, I teach at um, the LOK Fashion Institute in Stafford. Um, so it's a new program um, that basically is all of the college classes that you would take in a fashion university without having to take math again and science again and all those things that nobody really likes teaching any or taking anyway. So um, yeah, we're doing a certificate program through the state 
So you get um, a, a state of Virginia certificate in fashion design, and it's like a one-year program. But I feel like I have so much to teach that we're we're already looking at um, making a two-year associate's degree as well. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. So I can do some online classes. We do some in person. Um, but it's uh, if you wanted to look at our website, yeah, it's LOK Fashion Institute. So. Um, but yeah, we do a lot of this and we actually make, um, in class, we make our half scale dress forms. So I have some of these that I've printed out. Actually, I think I have some right behind me. Oh, I do. Yeah. So I print these out on, I print my bodices out on, um, heavy cardstock, and then we cut them apart and, um, basically glue them together. And then, um, I have a, a base that we set them on and then you have your own, uh, half scale dress form and we do like detachable sleeves and I think I have a skirt oh yeah right and left arms um I'm not sure if I have any skirts printed out yes and then my skirts are on the fold you know so it's that we can tape them up so it's a lot of glue it's a lot of paper clips but it's it's like kind of crafty and fun so um maybe I can do another um another class on half scale dress forms because like I said it's it's just um, clips and maybe some pins and a lot of fun. So maybe next time I'll try to remember her. Um, and, oh, actually here I, in this stack was my diamond skirt too. So I know we're, we're mostly just talking about bodices today, but it's the same principle applies that if you um, you have your combined bust point or uh, dart end point and you draw through your darts and then you can draw in your new style line and then you close those waist darts and then it gets sent here to that uh, diagonal seam. So it's just about drawing the seams, the style seams that you want, and then closing up the kind of old fashioned -y looking, um, you know, fitting darts. So, okay. Uh, is the half scale dress form um, just sort of like a standardized measurement or is it based on the measurements of the people in your class? Right. Um, the first set that we've made um, is like a size 12. Um, but I'm working on a set that's like a six that has, um, rather than like the darted bodice, um, mm -hmm. has more of a, um, the, like the under bust scene so that we can kind of fit closer. Um, and we're actually working on our own custom slopers between now and Christmas so that we can finish those. And then, um, I mean, I, this is all in software, um, but you can, uh, working from your sloper, if you put your alterations into the half scale dress form uh, template, then you can print that out and um, make a custom half scale dress form. So that's kind of what we're going to work on um, even into early spring because I want one too. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I'm like, that's so cool because then you really can just like scan in these little bits and print it out 200% and it should be um, good to go for your first bidding. So, um, but it's like, I think it's something, what is the, like something old is new again, that funny saying that, um, uh, uh, in like the, I don't know, late 1800s, even you just, well, starting in the 1700s that fashion uh, plates were, uh, or fashion samples were always done in scale. So a third scale, usually in the French couture houses, um, I prefer half scale because the bodices I think are a little too small in third scale. Um, but it used to be a way that the salesmen would travel with small samples um, to different cities and towns to sell their garments and not have to carry full-size garments around. Um, and then I know during the pandemic, um, Dior uh, did a whole fashion um, uh, a whole fashion season in scale. So their couture collections are all little teeny tiny um, third scale gowns. And for the most part, you can't tell until you get up close and you see like a bead or something like that that you realize um, is not quite as tiny as it should be. So that was kind of fun and inspirational to me as well to see all of the, like the major fashion houses, you know, last year, like reimagining how they do runways and fashion shows and, you know, um, doing things back again on the, the half scale forms. So, but yeah, I saw, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. On you know. puppets. Okay, I'm sorry, say again. I saw one where they did it on puppets. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was cool. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so it's great. I think the the pandemic really made the the fashion industry rethink um, almost everything, like how they run their businesses, how they um, you know have fashion shows. Um, I don't know. I think I think it was cool. I think it it 
um, created a lot of innovation. Um, so, okay. okay, so, all right. Are there any other questions? Dawn, if you wouldn't mind going back to your um, embellishing on the sweaters. Uh -huh. Can you, because they will stretch mm -hmm. or even the top you had on where you showed us the beads, uh -huh. how do you decide how much ease to leave in the, you know, for the stretch so that these things don't pop off? Oh, right. Um, for the knit. Yeah, I think for the one that I'm wearing, it's kind of a, it's just a, a cotton, so it's a stable. Um, it's not slinky. So I think beading on a slinky knit would be hard, you know, definitely harder. Um, but, you know, I guess you can use, um, you know, wash away stabilizers or things like that. But I guess I just kind of go kind of slow and easy. And I just watch the fabric and make sure it's not stretching as I go. Um, well, I'm thinking of the sweaters particularly because, you know, particularly if it's a pullover, it's going <laughs> to. Oh, you know, OK, so so my secret um, is cardstock. And so I have a sheet of cardstock or poster board inside my sweater when I'm working on it. So it gives me a flat surface and then I don't stitch through both layers of the sweater. So I can, oh. and that's funny, as I pinned here, like I think I pinned down lower first. So, so I have my card stock underneath. And then if you wanted to, you could clip the sweater, you know, to the card stock um, or I guess poster board. I have poster board in this one. And then, so as you're stitching and working, um, it doesn't really stretch. So, um, yeah. but when you put it on, uh -huh. it won't stretch too much. So right. Pull the stitches out. Exactly. No. Um, I think with the couching stitch, because it's, you can either do diagonal on the top or diagonal underneath. It's kind of, it's already on its own bias. So I'm not running straight seams through it and it has a lot of give. Um, but I'd say when in doubt, just don't tighten your thread too much so that it puckers or, you know, draws in the knit. So it's just kind of a, a light, you have to have kind of a light hand for sure. Um, but I find like the yarn just wants to kind of grip on there. You know, it's not um, like two shiny surfaces that want to slide around. So you don't need quite the density of stitches either. So my stitches could be, you know, a quarter inch or three eighths inch apart. Um, so it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's fun. So this is another one of those sit in front of the TV, like finally get to, <laughs> you know, sit down and put your feet up and do a little hand sewing. Um, but yeah, definitely even cardboard, if you had heavier, you know, cardboard, that that's my, my trick. So, okay, great question. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Okay. <laughs> right. And so, but yeah, I just realized I have so many of these sweaters and I just wanted to just do something different. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I just kind of came up with this I guess I'd taken some tambour beading classes in England, but it's the same technique. So it's just a straight, it's like a straight stitch on the underside with just your chain stitch on top. So, and it just works like a crochet, you know, as you, you start with your slip stitch and you uh, take your needle through and you pull your slip stitch up and then you actually feed your thread or your yarn from the underside. So the, the yarn actually comes up to the surface. So it's, it feels opposite, but it, once you kind of get the hang of it and start working across, it goes pretty fast. So, and this was all scraps. So they're all little short vintage pieces that I have that I'm like, I, I want to use this. It's like, that's, you know, that collection <laughs> that you might have in your basement or your sewing closet. So I'm, I've been cleaning um, and I just want to, I don't know, just put more things into, into my wardrobe and not in boxes. So um, but I have lots of these sweaters and I have lots of this yarn. So I'm excited about different things. This one's kind of loose and flowy, but I can do some weaving. I can do um, bigger chain stitches with a larger hook. So um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. So, okay, I'm trying to think, right. And that's the same thing too with, with the edging on the, ooh, that's really bright all of a sudden. Yeah, so you can just crochet just your edging on the, and the, the ready to wear sweaters actually you can get a fairly large hook. It looks like the spaces are small, but it, it gives and opens up. So I use a much larger hook than I would think. And it just goes right through and stitches along. So um, I don't know, I love crochet. Like I said, as soon as you get that cool breeze of, of fall, I wanna start uh, crocheting or knitting something. Um, but I'm, I don't think I have the patience sometimes for a complete crocheted sweater. 
Um, and I just want to do like smaller borders that, you know, I feel like um, it's like more rewarding, <laughs> you know, you can get it done and you feel like it's custom and crochet, but um, it's not an entire sweater. So, um, okay. Yeah, my camera doesn't like the contrast of the light and the dark there. Okay. All right. All right. Well, fantastic. Um, I hope I've inspired everybody today to try a new technique, um, dart manipulations, beading, yarn, um, just anything that really strikes you and interests you. So um, I feel like there's few rules other than um, if you like it, wear it, and if it makes you happy, wear it. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So if there aren't any more questions, does anyone have any other questions before we go? Don, would you spell out the, the website for your fashion institute? Right, yes. Um, it's uh, L O K and then F A S H I O N I N S T I T U T E <laughs> dot com. Yeah, so L O K Fashion Institute. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, I think I'm going to add, um, I want to add like some online, like fashion history courses. Um, we're probably going to do some millinery, um, you know, things like that as well. So I, I like to do a balance. I think the pattern drafting class actually works really well online. Um, so I'm convincing my boss that it does work. And we did, we actually did online school all last year during the um, pandemic. Um, and I think it worked. Um, sewing, that's different. Yeah, we need, we have to be in person um, for the sewing because that's uh, harder to explain. So, um, but I'll let everybody know too, if they're interested in some of the online, then you don't have to travel. I do like that. <laughs> so, all right, fantastic. All right, are there any other questions? Nope. Okay, well, thank you so much for having me today. And like I said, just, Try to embellish a neckline, maybe for um, a Christmas party or a holiday event that you're going to, um, and get some tea or cocoa or coffee and do a little hand sewing as well. So, <laughs> all right. So happy holidays to everybody. And um, I guess I do look forward to seeing everyone in person uh, at a future um, sewing event. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank all you. Right. Great. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Okay. And Diana, I'll be in touch with you about the video and everything. So, um, okay. Actually, it would probably be better to uh, Mary Park. Mary, Mary Parker. Parker. Yes. Parker. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She'll put it up. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank uh, you. It okay. was great. Thank you. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Bye bye. Okay, bye.